ArcGIS Mobile at 10 is expanding to include more options and more functionality to help you do your work more efficiently. To demonstrate some of these improvements, we're going to look at a mobile workflow in the event of a foodborne illness outbreak. Agencies responsible for food safety have to investigate the source of contamination by collecting samples of various materials from farms and packaging facilities. In this scenario, there's been an outbreak of E. coli linked to spinach farms in the Willamette Valley region of Oregon. One option for the field inspectors who may not be GIS professionals is a handheld device such as this one running the out-of-the-box ArcGIS mobile application. It has this simple task-based user experience you're familiar with, and you can do things like view the map, collect features, or search for features. In addition, we have the new field crew management task. And this allows you to easily coordinate with other active field crews by email, SMS, or over the phone. And you can also view the locations of those teams on the map. Many of you have been successful with ArcGIS Mobile on handheld devices. So at ArcGIS 10, we want to provide the same functionality for tablet PCs, such as this one. This has the same list of tasks, but with a larger user interface and touchscreen capabilities, it's easier for gloved hands to use. There's a settings menu that allows you to do things like reskin the application for different light levels. For example, I'll switch to nighttime. You can now use a map service, such as this one, from your organization's ArcGIS system as a base map in the mobile application. You can also connect to your device's GPS to show your location on the map or to mark the location of features that you're collecting. I can simply tap in on the screen to zoom into the area of interest outlined in red here. As I zoom in, we'll see other layers turn on, representing historic farm boundaries and sample points. Some farms in this area have already been investigated and their samples sent to the lab for testing. The locations of where these samples are collected are displayed here, symbolized by the type of material. A for animal waste, F for food remnant, and W for water. There are many more farms in this area that need to be sampled, and field investigators can easily locate a particular farm by using the search task. In order to save time searching for features, you can now use a saved search so you don't need to construct a query every time. I'm just going to zoom my map in on this feature. And when field inspectors are ready to begin collecting samples, they'll go to the collect task and choose what type of material they're sampling. In this case, some spinach, which is a food remnant. I'm going to mark the location first by using the map, and then I'll edit the attributes. For the collector, I choose from a set of domain values that are carried over from the geodatabase. This saves time and helps minimize the chance of data entry errors. The date field is automatically populated with the current date and time, and I specify the property owner by using the built-in keypad. So again, I'm simply tapping on the screen to type in this name. Lastly, I can now attach a photo as an attribute of a feature. I'm going to browse for one that I already have on the device, and this allows another piece of important information to be stored with the data. Once the collection is finished, if I go back to my task list, I'm alerted to the number of changes to the data that have yet to be synchronized with the server. I'll go into that task and post the edits that I just made. And with this, we're making an immediate update to the database so it's kept current and accurate. Since ArcGIS Mobile provides two-way communication with the server, any changes that have been made to the database since the field crews were deployed can also be pulled down. For instance, some of the samples that were previously collected have since been tested by the lab for the presence of E. coli. I'll pull down those sample results across the extent of the area to see the latest information. If I go back to my map and I zoom out a bit, we can see the samples that tested positive for the bacteria symbolized in red and the negative samples in green. There's a clear cluster of positive samples in the center. And if I turn off my farms layer, we can see two streams passing through the points in red. So we might be able to use the hydrography of the area to help us determine the source of the contamination and where we might want to sample next. From my layer menu, I'm going to access some watershed data and switch my base map. So we can see that all of the positive samples fall within the same watershed, Middle Fork, Ash Creek. So the source is likely somewhere within this watershed and upstream of the points in red. 
We may also want to resample the farms within this watershed that tested negative previously. To help determine the upstream direction, I can use the accurate elevation and terrain information in this topographic base map from ArcGIS Online. I can see that the hills where these streams originate are in the northwest, so that's an area that we may want to sample next. The Identify tool can be used to draw a box over this area, and all the farms within that extent are returned. I choose one from the results list and can navigate to it using some integration with Arc Logistics Navigator. We hope that these new capabilities make your goals for your mobile workflow easier to achieve and allow you to do your job more efficiently. Now, I have one more thing to show you. Another exciting mobile offering is that ArcGIS at 10 will support the iPhone. So I can just open the application here on my phone, and I get a simple, easy-to-use interface with a basic map view and a few basic buttons. I can pan and zoom around this map, and I can switch between a couple of default base maps in my map gallery. Now, think of how many upper-level managers, executives, and other decision makers you know that use an iPhone. Wouldn't you like to be able to put your hard work at their fingertips? Well, in addition to this basic functionality, ArcGIS for iPhone allows you to incorporate your own agency's work. So for example, I could switch to a different base map that might be shared by the Bureau of Land Management, showing federal and Indian lands, or maybe a map from the EPA showing impaired waters. Now, any agency manager or even higher officials within the government who use an iPhone have this information literally in their hands. Not only can we see these base map services, we can also bring in more real-time information. For example, earlier, we saw Lauren doing some analysis to plan for evacuations from mudslides in Southern California. Her results could be shared through the Emergency Operations Center's ArcGIS system and then consumed on the iPhone. So I'll just turn on those analysis layers. I can get more information about these features by tapping them and viewing the attribute information. Lastly, in addition to being able to put your work in your manager's hands, ArcGIS for iPhone allows managers to provide information back into the system. So during an evacuation, people don't always go to their assigned centers. One of these centers is seeing a greater number of evacuees than anticipated, so I need to reallocate some staff. I can drop a marker at that location and then tap it to fill in some details. I can put a subject, maybe need more staff. I can attach a photo if it's appropriate and put in a description. Send five more. When I'm finished, I can share this request back to the operations center so the staff can take the appropriate action. ArcGIS 10 will include an API for the iPhone as well as a configurable out-of-the-box application available from the App Store. Both will allow you to leverage your existing ArcGIS system so you can put your great work in the hands of your managers and they can provide feedback to you on this popular platform. So I've just shown you how ArcGIS extends onto three different mobile platforms, making it easier to collect and share information in the field.